Hello everyone. First of all, I hope all of you stay safe and healthy. I really appreciate to KSPMB to give me a chance to talk about our technology. I'm Kilje Lee, Senior Field Application Specialist in Acquia Bioscience. Today, I will talk about Codex, a special biology solution for highly multiplex tissue profiling and single cell spatial multi-omic studies. We know that single cell genomic is a center of science since last few years. More than 1,000 institutes worldwide have been working on single cell genomic researches. And Human Cell Atlas project is one of the most spotlighted single cell genomic projects. According to fast progress in single cell genomics, spatial biology also get interest and focused together. One of the most popular technology in single cell genomics is the cytosine, which is available for transcriptome and proteomes. And there are big moves to combine the cytosine with multiplex immunofluorescence technology for spatial biology solution. Human Cell Atlas, the hottest single cell project, started from the 2017 and is making a body map of the human body and mouse model too. Now, over about the 2,000 researchers are involved in this project from about the, over the 1,000 research institute from 72 countries. In addition to human um, cell atlas, there are many other projects for the purpose of understanding the human body using single cell analysis, not only genomic, but also proteomic approach. We can say that we have huge data from single cell genomics and proteomics, but still we feel the need other tools to understand the human bodies better. We can find the answer from spatial biology too. Let me show and compare the result between the transcriptome and spatial biology in single cell level. The left side is the t -SNP plot, which is a typical outcome output from a single cell sequencing experiment. t -SNP plot is our two-dimensional visualization of the highly dimensional data. What you see in the TSNI is the different types of cells in different color, and each dot is one cell. So the gist of TSNI image is that there are many different cells with a different color and then a different quantity, that means that the number of dots per color. That's all you can see and there's no special information. The right-hand side is imaging of the bone marrow created with uh, about uh, three uh, antibodies for each marker in codex panel. Here you can see some li something like uh, similar to the TSNI from the uh, transcriptome. So, the many different cells in a different color, so essentially the different color type, different cell types, and the many countable cells. But the biggest difference is that this image result from the codex have a special information, like a distance within the cell types and the neighboring cell or the, the location of the each cells. That's important information which the single cell sequencing data never gave us. So now I'd like to introduce the spatial biology solution combined with the single cell genomics and how it make address more and better information to understand the human body. So there are, as, we, <coughs> as I mentioned before, there, are, there, there has been a recent explosion of the interest in the multiplex and the spatial biology as much as a single cell sequencing. The why, the reason why we, the why, the multiplex and the spatial biology can be the answer for the understanding about the spatial dimensions of the tumor microenvironment. 
First, several different spatial location of the immune cells in the tumor microenvironment has been shown to be correlated with the clinical outcome in different cancers. For example, in colorectal cancer, a prognostic factor that incorporated type, density, and location of the immune cell is outperformed tra traditional histopathological method to stage cancer. In ear negative and hot to negative breast patient, a high degree of the immune infiltration in tumor trauma was found to be associated with increased survival and complete response rate. In addition, uh, quantitative studies of the spatial heterogeneity have been also shown to be predictive of the progresses in breast cancer and follicular lymphoma. You can find so many references about the clinical relevance of the relevance of the tumor microenvironment and spatial context. But tumor microenvironment is not simple as much as we guess. So cancers are not just mass of the malignant cell, but complex local organs. So it means that many other cells are recruited and can be corrupted by the transformed cell. The interaction between the malignant and the non-transformed cell and create the tumor microenvironment and the cell to cell interaction, uh, intercellular communication can be the interaction can be the good tools to understand each other. So today I will introduce the codex technology which can answer to your request for special answer to understand the tissue context in a single cell level. This is the codex system. Codex is the first and costly effective benchtop solution for special resolved ultra highly multiplexed immunofluorescence. The Codex technology was developed in the lab the Dr. Gary Nolan at Stanford University. He developed the site of before, and then Codex is the late, latest multiplexed image platform technology from his lab, and uh, Aquila Bioscience has exclusive license to commercialize. This is the codex stage technology to understand how over the body markers are detected by antibodies specifically. We use primary antibody and nucleotide barcode. So each antibody in the panel is conjugated to a unique oligonucleotide barcode. Entire barcode conjugated antibody is applied into the tissue in a single step. Then dye reporters also have a reverse nucleotide, which is hybridized to each the barcode on antibody. It enables highly specific detection of the corresponding barcode of the antibody. Spectrally separated dyes allow the clear signal detection without any crosstalk. During each image cycle, three reporters, the dye label to include dye labeled nucleotide bind to their corresponding barcode of the antibody. Because of the unique barcode, each fluorescence signal can be captured from the where the marker is located on the tissue. First of all, the tissue is, in, tissue is stained with all antibody errant time. So after loading the old antibody, this tissue is fixed with the uh, Acquia fixation solution. So this is the uh, make all the antibodies sustained well on the tissue during the repeated cycle. All this process is done outside of the codex. Then the tissue slide can be tissue slide should be inserted in the codex system for all stained steps. After one step staining with antibody, the rebuild imaging rebuild, uh, removal cycle is controlled inside of the codex automatically. The three reporters are added in the each cycle, and then the reporters make a bind to 
the nucleotide barcode of the antibody. Microscope capture the fluorescence in each reporters. The first image with the four color, including the P, is saved with its spatial information. After imaging step, reporters are washed away to allow the addition of the next three reporters, and the cycle repeated until all antibodies are detected. This reveal imaging immutable cycle is controlled in the codex platform. So each learn can integrate with its spatial information after imaging. There are three things that consist of the codex technology. The first is the chemistry that allow us to stain label our tissue with over 40 antibodies at one time in a single tissue. Second is the instrument which is enable interactive cycles that only label up to three antibodies at one time. The last part is our software that combined all this data and allow for single cell segmentation with the spatial location information within the old cells. At our first step, I will, I will explain about the codex chemistry. I can say that one of the advantages of the codex chemistry is it is flexibility. You can, you can uh, use the various primary antibody upon your purpose with, uh, without any considering of the sample type like a fresh frozen FP sample. Codex reporters is available for three colors per cycle. And then you can use about the 50 nucleotide barcode to detect the, the antibody. So from the combination of the antibody, reporters, and barcode, you can make your own antibody, uh, antibody panel for your purpose. I'd like to give more the information about the antibody. We can categorize the codex antibody into three. The first is codex inventory antibody. It is the pre-conjugate antibody to our barcode and then is validated by our own R&D team and sold as a complete assay. The second is codex screened antibody. It's pre-screened antibody by Akoya R&D team for barcode and reporter comparability. These antibodies are not sold by the Akoya, so you can buy the old antibody from the each antibody vendors and then purchase the barcode from the Akoya, then conjugate the antibody with the barcode for yourself. The third is Codex community antibodies. Even the Akoya R&D teams doesn't test this antibody. It's tested, by, tested and shared by Akoya. Codex user. This is the list of the inventory antibody because these inventory antibodies are conjugated with a barcode and then it's easy to make your own the antibody panel for ready to use on your sample without any optimization step. Acquire developed codex inventory antibody kit for human FAP fresh frozen and mouse fresh frozen and FAP sample too. I'll move to the understanding how the codex control the staining and imaging cycle. For this label image remove auto staining cycle, codex is combined with the Kians microscope. Because the Kians is enclosed microscope, it has stable frozen signal from protecting the light. Codex prepared the reagent and the control the staining order for each staining cycle. Staining stage is prepared outside, then inserted in the Kian's microscope. So all staining cycle is performed inside of the microscope covered with a lid. 
Staining stage is designed to stain the copper slip, not the, the slide glass within the two gaskets. What you remember is that you have to prepare the tissue sample on copper slip, not the slide glass for codex learning. The last part of the codex solution is codex sphere. The codex solution includes the software suite for downstream imaging process and analysis. Codex supplies three different software. The CIM, the Codex Instrument Manager, control the fluidic instrument and the microscope. It generates and then stores the imaging and then it can transfer all data to SAM, the Codex Analysis Manager software in another PC. SAM does uh, SAM means that the codex the, the processor so it will work like uh, it uh, it do the image process like a deconvolution, stitching, background subtraction and cell segmentation etc. After finishing the the data process data can be opened in MAV multiplexed uh, analysis viewer. So MAP is a free software and the end users can generate pre-visualization data like a T-SNI plot, gating plot, spatial map, etc. I will show you one example of the whole tissue staining with a codex system. You can see this whole tissue imaging in MAP software. This is the human tonsil tissue an image is stained with uh, 41 markers, uh, markers in the tonsil tissue. So tonsil is a good positive tissue sample to test the major uh, immune cell types. It only shows the six colors because our eye cannot recognize 41 colors at one time. So MAP give an option to pick up the marker up to seven, which you want to see in one image. You can see the expected staining pattern of the germinal center, uh, center by the CD19 in red and then surrounding T cell with the green colors. After staining the tissue, you can zoom in one region of the interest, uh, like a uh, right side, so you can check the each single cells staining the status. One of the most important features of the codex analysis is single cell level analysis. From cell segmentation, you have the all single cell information including spatial dimension for each cell and integration uh, signal intensity for each cell across all the codex markers. Codex can show cell cytometry like a gating plot. You can change the parameter and then get gating lizard. Uh, and then MAP also enable narrow down gating to find the specific cell. And then you can see mask the cell on the imaging and then confirm that confirm that imaging and gating lizard has a correlation. This morphological information with the gating leaf plot is the big benefit of the codex comparing with the the typical cell cytometry. Codex also enable automatic cell clustering from multiple parameters calculation. Because the huge number of the parameters applying the for this calculation, you can find as many as different types of the cluster. And the cell, uh, so you can uh, compound the specific cluster in imaging. This also single cell data combined with the cluster data can be shown in the MAP software. The most important thing and the unique features of the MAP is that t -SNP plot high dimensional analysis. So you, you, you can check the, all the clustering and the single cell with a very huge, nice imaging in a tissue. Now I will show you very useful tool in MOBS, so Codex High Multiplex Analysis Enable Advanced Phenotyping. And it can be visualized as a Boronoi diagram in an image. 
From the automatic clustering, you have the information of the various cell type, and then now you can make your own annotation. In this slide, Brunoi diagram show one of the lymphoid follicular structure in tissue. It label the complex cell lapinotypes and subtypes can be uncovered using the high multiplex codex panel. In this image, about the 20 phenotypes can be determined, and then it just the 20 the phenotype is shown from the only single cell single ROI. So Boronoi map is good tool to see the different cell type with a very easy way. So you can see that the this night B cell is uh, expressed in the germinal center with a very easy way. So with the effective visualization of the advanced phenotype, spatial mapping is very important tool from the multiplex data. So map soft, uh, map soft data. From the previous uh, from the previous slide, we found over the 20 phenotype cell in the maps map software showed effective spatial map. So now so from the, this map, the red means that two phenotypes are close and then blue means far from the, each other. We can confirm this on the Boronoi map. In the spatial map, FDC cell is close to the B cell. And then in the Boronoi map, green FDC is neighboring with the red B cell. And then in another example, in the spatial map, vascular endothelial cell is uh, vascular endothelial cell is very far from the, the T cell in the with the DC. And the, this Boronoi map, you can see, you can find the T cell in yellow is far from the magenta with the magenta. So from this. From this, I'd like to say that the Codex Multiplex Analysis tool have that you resolved more cell phenotype and uncover uh, what specific interaction drive disease pathogenesis, prog progression, and the treatment response effectively. Before moving to the next session, I'd like to briefly summarize the advantage of the Codex. The first is the flexibility. Because you can use any antibodies regardless of the host species, labeling with a barcode antibody is a single setup with no cross-reactivity. Cross the second is no spectral overlap because we use spectrally separated for color. A third is fully automated microfluidic system. And it has high resolution for subcellular analysis. And we codex release the file format as FCS, so any customer can use the variety of the third-party software for more the ownership. Now I will show you one example how codex delivers single cell and then spatial data with the imaging. Here, this breast cancer tissue is stained with the 36 antibody. It includes tumor and epithelium marker and immune cell marker and others. Because the BRISTI tea and other cancer research, research rely on heavily on the FAPP patient tissue, but FAPP tissues are only poor comparable with the modern diet uh, omics technology like a single cell sequencing. And then, unfortunately, there, are, there is little confident that new multiplex imaging technology can reliably detect biomarker in precious patient sample. From this example, I want to show that Codex enable single cell level analysis with excellent spatial resolution imaging in clinical patient sample. As you can see, one FAP tissue was stained, was stained with a 36 different marker. For visualization, you have free choice in color and marker combination 
upon your purpose. From this smart plast imaging, you know that tumor region is highly heterogeneous, and the high multiplex show these complex structures very easily. You can navigate the image region and choose some region for compar comparison or more detailed analysis. You have so many options in analysis region range from single ROI to whole region. From this image analysis, you can have huge segmentation information. There are over uh, 36,000 cells in this imaging, each, and then each cell has correlated uh, intensity information uh, from 36 marker with a spatial co coordinated thing. And then I'll give you, uh, it will give unbiased cluster and then single cell spatial biology information. This is the T-SNE, the plot from this the breast cancer marker. Each T-SNE plot shows the heat map of the each marker's expression. So now you can see that the keratin 17 and the 5, 13 expressed in the some very small region. So we can find that this area is the basal cell. And then here, you can see the keratin 19, keratin 18, and the keratin 6 is expressed very highly in the same region. So we can confirm that these are epithelial luminal cells. And then in, the, in addition, you can find there are so many the, the cells or markers are expressed in the some specific cell level we the clustered and then make the our own 10 different types of the cluster in cluster one of the most benefit of the codex that this the TSNI plot can be compounded in the imaging so here we guess that these are basal cell and then you can compound with a marker and then these are luminal cell and then it can also be shown in the luminal markers. So these kinds of the toggling between the clustered in the map and the morphology data is a big benefit of the codex. And then you can find a very small region and in, the, in this region you can see the very rarely express the keratin 13 and then keratin 8 is expressed together. So we can say that we can we know that these very layer luminal cells are located and closely the expressed with the basal level. So you uh, from the it, in this is the only the 44 cells among the over the 63,000 cells. So we can say that codex is very good has a very good precious phenotyping tool. So and then this, because of the codex show the spatial map, we can confirm that this layer luminal cell is very close to the basal cell. This is the side by side comparison of the single cell sequencing and the codex data. In the single cell sequencing data, we can see that RNA expression in thousands of cells. So codex also can deliver the protein expression data in thousands of cells. From the single cell data, we know that we know the information about from the over the 25,000 gene, and then codex can deliver the omics data with the 43 proteins. And then single cell data also deliver the clustering, and then codex also has its own the clustering information. So this is the heat map from the each technology. We know that the we know the all the mRNA expression level from the each the each cell, and then codex also uh, deliver the protein expression protein expression data. And then both the technology also can make its own clustering map 
And then this, the left side is the, the RNA cross chain from the gene expression data, and the right thing is the protein cross chain. We know that the gene expression can influence the protein expression. So we, there are some the trial to find the correlation between the gene expression and the protein expression. So this is the one example of the this the test, this the study. Camilla Lab at the UPenn wrote a program uh, that merged information from cytostick, the single cell sequencing data, with a codex, with the codex data in protein level. This enabled researchers to learn about the transcriptome and the proteomics of the single cell. This software can deliver spatial information and transcriptome information too, and then this spatial information resolution is edited from the codex data. And then transcript data comes from the cytosine. So cytosine is a very the popular and the unique technology can deliver the protein and then RNA expression data from the single cell. But cytosine needs a cell, uh, single cell isolation, so it doesn't have the, any the spatial information. So anyway, the cytosine produces multiplexed protein and mRNA expression data. And then from the my the present previous is the expression, we know that codex produces multiplexed protein expression data. So we have a two the clustering information from the cytosine and then codex. So we can imagine that some the gene expression can be involved in the some protein expression. And then now this is cell types can be shown in the imaging from the codex. So we can confirm that this cell and this the cell uh, shown that this area with the different uh, the RNA level with the protein level. So this kinds of the correlation, the research between the protein and transcriptome is a good trend to understand the protein, the human body in a single level. The software, the pro software to produce the, this kind of integration data, uh, named with a stevia, is merged the statistic data plus codex data. This stevia is a computational algorithm that combines the statistic plus codex data, and that this the stevia uh, used the proteomic data and the whole transcript data, and then find the correlation. The most important thing is that anyone who uses the statistic and codex data can use the this stevia. You can contact this lab to use this stevia. So this stevia software significantly expand the horizon of the biological discovery. So many uh, uh, many people so, uh, expect that codex is only available for tissue to showing the spatial the information, but codex is tested in the suspension cell, and then as you see that this imaging, the codex successfully stained the single cell from the, the PBMC. So currently, the, because of the COVID-19 situations, the PBMC is a good sample to test some immune cells which is involved in the COVID-19 against. So uh, you can find, uh, you can you know that the codex can be a good tool to test the suspended cell to test the immune cell in the blood. And then another the interesting, the tissue is the lung because of the COVID-19, the many the patient sample comes from the lung and then Codex also tested so many the antibody biomarkers which is correlated in the codex in the, co the COVID-19. So you can we announced we the annotated uh, we the noticed that this antibody panel which can be used in a COVID-19 test. So if you are interested in the COVID-19 test panel, you can access to the, our website to get the more information. 
So now I'd like to make the conclusion. So Codex is a Codex system enable highly multiplexed immunofluorescence imaging across the whole tissue or region of the interest. And the Codex is compatible with the FFP and fluorescent sample. And then it, there's no limitation in the human. It's available for the mouse tissue too. Most important thing is that Codex help you understanding uh, in tumor microenvironment with a quantitative spatial analysis data uh, in a single cell level with a very cost-effective method. So now the Codex is the, handled by the BMS in Korea. So if you have more questions about the Codex, please contact the BMS. You can find the, the website address and then their address and phone number here. Thank you so much for your attention and I hope that you stay safe and healthy. Thank you.